Hello, everyone. Our guest today is Mr. Mark Kermish, CIO and Chief Technology and Quality Officer at CNH Industrial. Mark, it's a pleasure to have you on our show today. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. How, how do you look at this India Tech Center contributing to the global CNH uh, business? Sure. So the India Tech Center is absolutely critical to our global business. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One is the type of talent that's being produced out of India today uh, has tremendous technical expertise. There's more graduates coming out with technical degrees than in other parts of the world that enable us to deliver on our innovation, productivity, and sustainability objectives for our customers. So, you know, when you look at the Indian operations today, of course, you have four R&D centers, uh, you know, and, and in the global uh, scenario, you have 30. So four out of the 30 R&D centers are in India. Clearly, India is an important market. But are you looking at making India a strategic hub for any of your, uh, let's say, technology or innovation uh, opportunities uh, for CNH globally? We absolutely are. And I think earlier we talked about uh, the concept of strategic, and we actually had a word come up that was critical, right? It's absolutely necessary for us to be in India to drive the innovation agenda that we have for CNHI. Not only will the other R&D centers leverage the India Technology Center, we're embedding the Indian technology capabilities in, inside of our product development teams today. So they become a natural extension of how we develop product globally around the world. So when you look at the global mega trends that we see in the mobility sector today, uh, of course, you know, autonomous being one, electrified being the other. Uh, how do you look at this for your business uh, henceforth, not just for the Indian operations, but also globally? Yeah, so from a global perspective, you know, we believe alternative fuels and autonomy are the future for our industry. On the alternative fuel side, it's reducing the sustainable, the, the, the eco impact to our farms and our land that we all live, for, live on and are fed from. Uh, and that includes electrification. It includes, you know, the circle of life in regards to using methane gas to, produ to produce power for our vehicles, as well as natural gas or, or other uh, alternative fuels. From an autonomy perspective, it's really around driving pro productivity for our farmers. Mm -hmm. The labor market around the world is changing dramatically. And as more and more countries move towards industrialization, there's less feet on the farm to do the work. And those farmers that remain have to rely on autonomy to actually deliver food for the world. Uh, and so again, we also look at autonomy coupled with automation. The two really go hand in hand to drive productivity and profit for our farmers. Particularly for the Indian market again, you know, India as a market is, of course, very value conscious and cost conscious. So when we look at these mega trends, autonomy as well as uh, electrified uh, vehicles for uh, the segment, what is the kind of work that is happening at CNHI? Yeah, so I think if I look at it from a value perspective, you know, we're focused first on mechanization and that's then going to lead to automation here in India in particular. But we also look at that value customer, essentially driving forces globally that allow us to lower the cost of the technology. And so while we may introduce autonomy or precision bit capabilities outside of India, we know that value customer is going to mature and want those same capabilities. And we can do that testing and innovation here in country as costs are reduced and then be able to provide those capabilities back to farmers globally. Okay. Could you give us a sense of some sort of product innovation that's happening, uh, particularly in the agri segment for the Indian market? Yeah, so I think a, a couple. One would be, um, you know, better utilization of fuel consumption, mm -hmm. right? The more that we can have our the more our tractors can consume fuels less, it improves the profitability of that farmer here in India. I think the second is really looking at how we can create uh, low cost mechanization on our tractors that allow that Indian farmer to be more productive with less people. Uh, especially when you think about being able to do that at a value that allows the, I'll we'll call it the micro farmer that's working on very small plots of land to be productive and afford that vehicle to drive the profitability for their business. The other uh, aspect that you also mentioned is that of uh, digitalization. So when it comes to digital services, both for your agribusiness as well as construction business, what are some of the new uh, expected you know, innovations to, that we could see coming in? 
Yeah, so we talk about fleet and farm management. Fleet's going to be more on the construction side and farm, obviously, on the farm, but it all starts with the connected vehicle. So for a farmer, being able to understand what that engine is doing at any given time during the use and be able to create alerts back to our service and dealer network to be able to then go out to that farmer and potentially help that farmer fix their vehicle before it actually breaks, right? It can also drive notifications to the farmer themselves around oil consumption, fuel consumption, other fluids that may be uh, being consumed as well, as well as being able to talk around uh, other what I'd call replaceable parts, be it filters or other that that farmer might need to take care of. On the construction side, a lot of it is going to be around uh, management of the fleet within the construction zone itself. So if you are a construction operator, you know where your vehicles are and you can then manage safety better. You also have the same capabilities around preventative maintenance and overall uh, total cost of ownership management for those vehicles. You're, you're strengthening your, uh, the talent pool that you have in, in the country. You've mentioned that this is going to increase from 100 odd in 2021 to about 1,000 employees by 2024. Now, what sort of reverse innovation can we expect to see going out of India to the global operations of CNHI? We just talked about digitization, and I think that'll be the number one export of innovation back out to our global customers. We are truly building what we call our precision science and technology teams here in India to help serve our global customers. They're building their products on the cloud. They're using modern data ingestion. We're starting to look at AI and ML capabilities coming out of India to be able to provide those tool sets for a farmer in Australia or a farmer in North America or a farmer in Europe that might be at a point of leveraging those uh, capabilities to drive profitability for their farms. What is the sort of investment that goes into your R&D operations? Considering if I look at the global operations, 30 R&D centers, 42 plants, clearly tells me that the R&D is extremely uh, important at CNHI. Of the overall revenue, uh, what is the kind of share that goes into R&D every year? That's a great question. Uh, on a percentage basis, yeah, I want to say it's around three to four percent total revenue. It equates to just over a billion dollars in reinvestment for research and development across all of our product lines. You've also said that India is a value destination. Uh, explain that to us. How do you describe value destination? First and foremost, I describe value as the outcomes that India can drive for us. And that you know, is in regards to innovation that India can deliver for our customers, uh, the improvement of productivity, as well as making uh, advancements in sustainability. There's also a cost component to value. We're doing work in India as a lower cost for us to be able to provide those innovations back to the world. Uh, and it also has a tremendous amount of talent that's coming out of universities every single year yeah. at a pace that is significantly higher than the Western world. That allows us to tap into that brain power uh, and also the youth that that provides as we think about the future of farming and the future of construction. That perspective is extremely valuable to us. All right. Uh, I also understand the VR lab that you have set up here is one among the three that you have globally. Uh, talk to us about the significance of this lab and what is it really expected to do for CNHI? So the pace of innovation is rapidly increasing every year, right? When you think about Moore's Law, Moore's Law kind of went out the door, I think, years ago because we're just innovating too quickly. Virtual reality allows us to imagine what we can produce for our customers uh, at that pace of innovation. No longer do I have to worry about bending metal or creating big clay or foam models to be able to visualize something that only one person could see in one location or I have to fly folks in and waste that time. Right. Now with virtual reality, we can literally collaborate around the world with the product where people can take their hands and they could open up the engine bay, they could climb into the cab, they can see where the controls are placed, uh, allowing us to really understand the human interaction with the machine but also understand that design aesthetic as well as the mechanics that are happening through that machine uh, in a manner that we can leverage our global talent pool. And India, you know, being one of three centers is really gonna be the horsepower that we need to continue to advance in that extended reality and virtual reality space. All right. Uh, finally, Mark, uh, if you have to look at the short to midterm sort of growth for the India Tech Center, how do you look at that? 
So I think I think getting from you know 100 employees to 1,000 employees, I would call our, is our short term, sure. right? What that opportunity looks midterm or long term, I think is really unlimited, right? I can easily see you know doubling or tripling our our base here in India to support the global needs of our organization uh, in that midterm future. Wonderful. Thank you so much for speaking to Mobility Outlook. I appreciate you taking time. Thank you. Thank you.